Please welcome in now new BYU punter Sam Vanderhart to the Locked On Cougars podcast. Sam, thank you so much for taking some time. How are you, sir? No, thank you for having me. Yeah, no, I'm very well, thank you. How you doing? Doing great. Uh, well, first off, congratulations on the commitment to the BYU football program. Uh, how does it feel to have it all, all signed, sealed, and delivered and to be a member of the Cougars? Yeah, it feels very good. Um, I'm very excited, obviously. Um, you know, obviously I know a special place BYU is, and um, I went on a visit, you know, sort of last week of June and pretty much fell in love with the place, to be honest. So, um, yeah, very excited to sort of announce now. Now, you mentioned the fact that you came out on a visit on June, obviously, so you sat out this season, obviously. Uh, mm. Obviously, you're a transfer from Pitt. Uh, how did that all go down, obviously, uh, finally deciding on BYU? What led you to decide that, hey, I, I want to go to Provo and play for Kalani Sitake? I think the relationships that I just kind of formed on the visit, I know it was only a very short visit um, with the coaches and even some of the players, it was just – I think I just realized that this was definitely the place for me. Um, and then obviously my wife, Hallie, came on the visit with me and she was kind of in my ear telling me to commit. So it was uh, that also helped the process. But um, yeah, and I just obviously the, the area itself is beautiful in the university. And um, yeah, I want to come to a program where I can contribute and ultimately win, really. Now, you did uh, spend time with the University of Pittsburgh, uh, punting for the Panthers there. Uh, did you cross uh, paths with Keaton Slovis? Obviously, BYU uh, got him this past season as their quarterback. Uh, were you guys teammates for a time, it looks like? Yes, sir, we were. Yeah, Keaton's a great guy, and um, I'm not surprised with the su success he had this year um, with BYU. So, yeah, it was kind of cool. It was a bit weird seeing him on my visit. I was just a little bit like, what's going on? And he was a bit surprised, obviously. Um but yeah, so it was it was pretty cool just to see him again. Now, if I'm not mistaken, you're you're part of the pro kick uh, contingent of uh, Aussie rules guys. Who, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, you grew up playing Aussie rules football and then transitioned into uh, as uh, a former Utah punter in the name by the name of Tom Hackett, kicking uh, the the pigskin around the around the football yard. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, yeah. So um, I obviously joined pro kick in uh, 2020, mm -hmm. sort of during the you know with COVID and everything else. Um, and yeah, Johnny, Johnny Smith and, and Nathan Chapman there, obviously they've got a phenomenal program and they were kind of the ones that facilitated the transition into American football and ultimately ending up at Pitt. So, um, yeah, they're great. And obviously you can see the success they're having this year with all the, all the Australian punters that are over here. Well, and that's the thing about it is there's kind of been like this influx of uh, of Aussie rules guys who you guys uh, grew up playing that sport. And the one thing I, I, I've been intrigued by is the fact that most of you guys who play Aussie rules football, you can kick almost equally well with both feet. How do you guys train that growing up? Yeah, it's a little bit unusual. I know over here, obviously, um, I guess just from a young age, my old man back home just sort of said that it was going to be an advantageous skill to learn. Um, and I took to it pretty early. I think I started sort of learning on both feet at about 11. Um, and then that just kind of kind of kept me in good stead with obviously my career back home in, in Aussie rules football and then coming over here. So um, yeah, it's something that's kind of just not that unusual for me just because obviously it's something I grew up doing. Um, but I can understand looking at it initially is a little bit strange, but uh, yeah. So that's kind of how it all started. Do you have the ability to punt the football with both feet or do you prefer one or the other where you have a dominant foot? I would say my right is ultimately probably the more dominant one. Um, mm -hmm. I, I spiral right, but I sort of roll out left and right. Okay. Um, and rolling out left and right, it's, it's not too dissimilar. Um, but I guess if I had to put a kick on my life, I would definitely roll out my right for sure. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, Coach Papinga, obviously the special teams coordinator. I'm sure you've uh, developed quite a relationship with him. Uh, what has been the communication from him as to what he expects you to do as a member of the BYU football program? Yeah, he's been phenomenal. Um, you know, we've been in constant dialect since since June, obviously. Um, he just wants me to come in and compete. Obviously, i, I got to come in there and, and earn the starting job and just try to put my best foot forward. Um, and then whatever role they sort of see they want me doing, you know, whether it's rollout, spiral, you know, obviously pooch pump, banana kicks, whatever it is. Um, you know, I'm confident I can sort of do whatever is required of me. And um, But as I said, I just want to get there in January and sort of earn the respect of the teammates first, earn the job, and then sort of go from there. 
Well, and that's the thing about it is so uh, they've had a pretty traditional style punt over the last couple of years uh, with Ryan Rico running things. Uh, have they indicated they'd like to go more of the uh, kind of you said the rollout, the ability to kind of do different types of punt with you uh, back there? Um, not necessarily. I think they sort of have they sort of just want to be able to do everything. Um, obviously, not that Ryan can't. Obviously, he can he can do whatever he likes. Um, as we can see this year, he was phenomenal. Um, but yeah, I think they sort of just want to be able to sort of do, you know, whatever, like whatever's going to be my strongest, um, asset when I'm there, that's probably what we'll run with. But, um, yeah, obviously I just got to go in there and, and do whatever's asked of me and, um, just compete really. Now you did mention that you are married earlier on, uh, how long have you been married for and, uh, what does your wife think of Provo? Yeah, Hallie, Hallie loves Provo. Um, ever since we got there, she was definitely a big fan, as I mentioned earlier. Um, but we got married last June, so um, been together about four years, um, and she's been great. Just sort of having her as a backbone and support. So, yeah. Well, you'll fit right in because there's quite a few BYU guys. I'm sure they pointed it out. There are a number of BYU football players who are married. A lot of them have children as well, so it, it kind of fits right with the whole thing that BYU is all about. It seems like. For sure, yeah, that was one thing they sort of let me know because obviously coming from Pitt, I think there was one other guy on the team married, and then and then me, um, and I am twenty six, so I'm a little bit older. And then obviously coming on my visit, um, they let me know that there was about thirty guys married, I think, and I, I thought that was unusual, but in the, in a good way, obviously, you know, because there's just more guys that probably have more in common with. Now, you mentioned that you're a little bit older as well. What ultimately pushed you to decide that, hey, I'm going to go punt American footballs versus continue playing Aussie rules fo football? Um, I just sort of thought it was something I would give a give a crack with. Obviously, I know the success Pro Kick had had, um, and you know I knew that I could kick the ball okay, I guess. So I was like, all right, well, I may as well just go and give it a try. And um, my wife being American, I just sort of thought it was a good opportunity for me to be able to come over here and um, you know, I was, I was blessed enough to be able to get an offer from Pitt and kind of just roll with it from there, to be honest. And then what ultimately led you to decide that you wanted to find a different program outside of Pitt? Um, I think obviously I just evaluated the year that I had at Pitt and, um, you know, I just sort of decided that it probably wasn't the best fit for me and Hallie. Um, and then kind of just entered the portal from there and, you know, it's had obviously contact with, um, coach pop once, once I entered the portal and, um, once I got there from a visit, it was sort of a no-brainer. You know, I went there and I think just the culture and, and the way that the coaches are definitely is very evident just from early on as soon as we got there. And, um, yeah, I, I probably knew in my mind that I was going to call it home after that visit. What was the most, I guess, surprising thing when you first got to Provo to you? Probably the mountains. Yeah, the mountains were, were full on. If I'm being honest, you know, rolling in there, I was like, all right, well, I'm used to Pitt being a very sort of urban city. Mm -hmm. um and then going into provo i was like wow that's that's full on so that was uh that was it but yeah i mean obviously in, in, in regards to the university and the stadium and everything else it was that was also really cool to see because you see photos and you sort of think all right that's got to be edited that's got to be a bit of a green room type setup um and then going there i was like wow no that's actually that's the real deal so well and you're a kid if i'm not mistaken you're you're from melbourne is that right yes sir yeah sure oh, so i so how how different is Melbourne versus Provo, if, if, if it is at all? Because I've, I've talked with some Aussies, and they say it's not that different in cer certain ways, but other ways it can be. Oh, no, it's different. Yeah, it's 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 very different. Mel Melbourne's great in its own right, but it's just a different city. It's obviously very sporty and very artsy, but it's it's um, it's got a lot of different layers to it. Not Obviously, I don't know enough about Provo to probably comment on that aspect of it, but I guess uh, aesthetically it's, it's entirely different. You know, obviously Provo is probably – one of the more beautiful sort of areas I've seen. Um, I think this is the difference. I've been to Denver, for example, okay. and obviously the mountains are prominent there, but Provo, it's like almost in your face, you know? So that's probably the biggest difference where I was just like, wow, this is this is obviously a great spot for Hallie and I. Now, the last thing I've got for you, but it's probably the most important question. Have you had the fortune of meeting uh, the one, the only Johnny Linehan yet? No, I've been hearing whispers about who that guy is though on on Twitter. He's he was the Kiwi, wasn't he? That, that yes, he's the Kiwi, yes. Right, yeah. I got a message to that man for sure though. 
Uh, I'm sure there'll be plenty of comparisons between the two of you, the whole Aussie versus Kiwi uh, dynamic at play here, but it's always good to have another Australian in Utah. I'm a guy who I work in sports radio here in Salt Lake. I don't know if you know who Joe Ingles is in the NBA. Uh, I got, so he's from Melbourne, came on my radio show for eight years while he's playing for the Utah Jazz here in Salt Lake City. And uh, it's always good to have more Aussies here in the here in the Beehive State. I can tell you that much. No, I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm already, you know, feeling the love from all the fans and um, even a few of the boys on the team have sort of reached out. So that's been really, really nice just to feel really welcomed. And uh, to be honest, I just want to get there and, and get cracking. So I'm excited. Well, we look forward to uh, seeing you show up here in January. Obviously, go through winter workouts, uh, spring uh, football, et cetera. But, Sam, thank you for taking some time to join me here on the podcast. And uh, best of luck with everything moving forward, all right? No, thank you very much, Jake. I appreciate your time. Thank you.